Good morning everyone, Gadget here for another video and in this episode we're taking our first look at the Canon EOS RP. Not too long after the announcement and release of the Canon EOS R, Canon has gone ahead and released their lightest and smallest EOS full frame camera. This is touted as an entry level full frame camera. That term was non-existent just a couple of years ago. You didn't really think about full frame photography for beginners, for people just getting into it. But this is in Canon's roadmap. The RP is really unique because you get some high end features that are brought over from the EOS R, as well as some features that are brought over from Canon's older DSLR lineup. What you end up with is a reasonably priced full frame mirrorless camera. But who is this really for? As soon as I picked this camera up, it was pretty apparent that Canon had some aggressive goals with this thing. Weighing in at about 440 grams for the body alone, the camera itself has a really good grip despite its size. It takes a new smaller battery, not the same battery that you'd find in the EOS R or Canon's DSLR lineup, and it has a single SD card slot. The RP packs a 26 megapixel full frame sensor. And what that means for a lot of these entry level photographers that might be graduating from a Rebel camera is that they'll be able to get a lot more depth of field than they're normally used to. I had a good amount of time to test this camera for our first look and I was impressed at how it handled. Though it is a mirrorless camera, it had more of a DSLR feel. And again, at 440 grams and really tight body, the grip felt really nice. It's something that you're not used to on portable mirrorless cameras. Usually you don't get a grip this deep and this comfortable. But Canon has built something that's really ergonomic and easy to use. Gone is the LCD screen that you'd find on the EOS R and in replacement you have a mode dial that most people are accustomed to to quickly switch between your different shooting modes. Users can expect a decent amount of range with ISO, but I'll be interested to see how far this thing can really go. It has a Digic 8 processor, one of the fastest that Canon has available on the market. So while the specs aren't necessarily earth shattering, this thing performs really well and quite reliably. One of Canon's tentpole features is their dual pixel autofocus, which they're touting is the fastest available, measuring in at five hundredths of a second. That is crazy fast and the same speed of autofocus as you'd find on the EOS R. On the back, you have that very angled display that Canon loves to show off. A fantastic feature for those of you that are looking to take selfies or even vlog a little bit with this device. Again, because of its size and portability, it is something that you'll be able to do these kind of shots with relatively easily and without too much strain. The camera itself is not a speed demon. It goes to about four frames per second with the continuous focus on Canon servo mode or five frames per second with the focus locked. This might be fast enough for most family photographers and casual shooting, but those of you that are doing a lot of sports or even some nature photography, it might not hold up to your needs. What confused me a little is the video features that are being offered with this thing. I didn't have too much time to test it out, so look out for that in our full review. But the features itself, well, they're a little all over the map. At 4K, you get 24 or 25 frames per second. At full HD, you get 25, 30 or 60 frames per second. There is no 120 frames per second, but it just seems strange that certain frame rates are omitted from certain resolutions. I'm sure there's a reasoning for this at Canon, I just don't understand what the reasoning is myself. Maybe they look at the metrics and say, well, most of our users are not using those frame rates, so we decided to exclude them and make this a simpler product to use. But again, to have it in one resolution and not the other, I don't know if I can give Canon a free pass on this. And again, we'll be testing that out in detail in our full review. In my early look at this thing, it just left me confused. Now, here's the other thing. While the body is aggressively priced, the lenses are not. They are a little bit pricier. And when as soon as you put them on, they do add quite a bit of heft to the camera. But for those of you that have your Canon lenses of yesteryear, you'll be able to use them with an adapter on this camera and they work incredibly well. That may be good for a little while, 
but trust me, you're gonna wanna try these new RF lenses. Whether it's that new 50 millimeter or the 24 to 105, these lenses perform incredibly well. They were able to lock into my subject, track them accurately, and generate some of the most pleasing images that I've seen. I haven't had time to really dive deep into the raw files, but even the JPEGs left me impressed. What's nice about these lenses is that you'll have a ring for zoom where applicable, you'll have your standard focus ring and another customizable ring. So you get a lot of control on each lens without having to take your eye out of the viewfinder. On the body itself, you get a full microphone input, a headphone out, as well as USB-C and mini HDMI. The USB-C is nice because you can use it to transfer information as well as charge the device with a battery pack that's compatible or through a USB charger. When using this camera, it felt like picking up a Canon camera. The menu system is recognizable, navigating them felt easy enough, and getting into the shooting modes was as you'd expect with a Canon camera. While I really enjoyed the ergonomics of the camera body itself, the lenses available right now on the RF mount are quite bulky and they will tire you out depending on how long your shoot is going for. But depending on what you're shooting, they'll be able to render some amazing images and really impress you. In the short time that I was testing this camera during another shoot, I was really impressed by the autofocus system. Canon loves to talk about how fast it is and believe me, it is that fast. The dual pixel system really kept up with subjects, whether it was their face or their eye, no matter how quickly I was moving it, it was able to capture that focus and lock into my subject really quickly. So if I'm looking at this thing, it seems like they've taken some of the best guts that they have, especially with the processor and the autofocus. They borrowed some features from some of their older cameras and released this thing at a price point that is super aggressive. Again, you're looking at a full frame camera at about $1,700 Canadian. So on paper, who is this camera really for? Well, if you're a professional or an enthusiast, there might not be enough here to cover your workflow. But for a lot of beginners or people that are stepping up from their Rebel camera, you're looking at something that has Canon's best autofocus, their latest processor, and the accessibility to all their new RF lenses. That seems to be the three things that Canon is focusing on. Not to mention you have the lightest and smallest body that Canon has ever produced with a full frame sensor in the mirrorless format. Overall, the camera checks a few boxes, but I still have a lot more questions. So look out for the review where I'll really put this thing through its pace and see how it holds up in a professional environment. More importantly, what do you think about this camera? Let me know in the comments below. Believe me, we're gonna test this thing for our full review, but I'd love to hear some of your early thoughts. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when a new episode drops. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Anytime there's cannon in the title, it's like lighting a fuse and watching the fireworks. So let's hope for the best and see what happens.